Hi there, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'll be talking about App Sync and how we can utilize to make mobile apps and how we can have a uh, GraphQL or we can how we can integrate the DynamoDB, how it is already integrated with the DynamoDB, how to evoke a Lambda function and how we can utilize the Elasticsearch and all those things. Just I'll give you a quick overview about the App Sync. So basically, So you might have seen this uh, this whole infrastructure. So I'll explain you how does it works. So AppSync, it is a basically a single data API. So it is helpful to create a faster serverless graph well, as well as a PubSub API that is a publisher subscriber API that we can have it. And we can also simplify the application development. And we can have a single endpoint to securely query and update the data from the multiple databases or the microservices or any APIs. So at one place, you can do all those things and it is for real-time experiences. So we can have the real-time, uh, this publisher and subscriber, subscri uh, subscribers, publisher and subscribers APIs that will be automatically publishing the data and it is 100% serverless. So it is, there is AWS WAP is also there, CloudWatch is also there, X-Ray is also there. The full setup is there that is manageable. So there are lots of use cases are there. So I will not go into detail about this, uh, this things. So let's, uh, let's directly go to the app sync console. So let's uh, create an API. So I'll be just using a visit. So there is a import date. DynamoDB table is also there. Built from scratch is also there. Create a real time API also there. WebSocket API where the client subscribe to the channels. So there is a chat based chat based app is also there for the sample project or some task apps are also there. We can also use group authorization with Cognito user pool. So these all are linked up. Like if you want a UI for authenticating your users and all, you can directly use the Cognito user pools and all. Even this in broader view, when we will be using AWS uh, Amplify, the studio, in that case, we can use it more So if you want to have a blog app that use AWS Lambda to read or write to Amazon RDS in a blogging app, that also we can create a sample project for that. So, but for this, I'll be just creating a, just a simple event app that will help you to just show you the basic, like how do we can use this, just a kind of events and user comments that we can use this event based app, event app basically. So let's start this one. So my, my, App sync app create. So it will take some time to create the DynamoDB table. So we you know we need to uh, just to wait for a while and let it complete the steps. So in the meantime, you can just if you another tab is open, just you can go to the DynamoDB and in the tables, just keep on refreshing over here. So you can if there is no tables over here, then you can easily see over here so you can see comment table event table so these two tables are created by this app string for that sample project that is the event that we did so this is a create event now if you see over here my app string so there are some queries are there that we can write validate and test the graph ql queries over here so this is the next level you know of this querying the or writing the APIs over here. Now, if you see over here, uh, currently, uh, let me go back to this one, and you can see there is a mutation create event, my first event, where today my house, very first event like that, and ID name is there. So two columns are there in that table, and query list events. Now, if I, if I choose over here, let's say list events, so you can see it will not return anything because I haven't created the events. Now, if I choose over here, create events, so it will just run that particular one. So you can see it has created the event and it's given an ID and all. Let me change some uh, name over here. And again, I will execute this one, create event, 
and then I will just go to the list event. So these are the events over here. So this is, you can see, we can also like uh, have a description, name, when, where. We can just uh, choose from here all the options. And we can also go ahead with the delete event also. If you want to delete, you can just put the ID over here. And then automatically you can see it will show you the delete option over here. Let me put some ID over here. I will copy this one and paste it over here. I think some some mistake is there done by me. Okay, so I need to pick my cursor, make it sure it is outside over here, somewhere down. So we can choose this one. Okay, so you can just paste your ID. I should show you over here the delete event also. So we can choose the ID. You can see delete event ID. So now hopefully it's not showing, but uh, still you can select and while creating it will delete that particular event. Okay. So while creation only it's deleting that particular ID. So we can choose over here, whatever you want to do. And you can define when, where, basically you're putting some criteria of your queries. So this is all based upon like uh, API key and we, for every um, app sync, there will be API key on the base of that you need to share with your subscribers in order to return the results to them. Now, if you go to the tables over here, these are the tables that are being created automatically. If you want to see some data, you can just uh, even table over here and you can select this one and explore the table items if you want. Complete it, zero items return. It, it sometimes it takes time. Run. Consume two. And let me do the query. Actually, we need to put the partition key and all those things are there. Okay. So now you can see basically the event that is a comment table. This is the event table. You can see birthday party and all those things. So if you make changes over here, that will get reflected over here also. That is the back end. So if you go to the schema over here, so you can see event ID, comment ID. This is for the comment and comment connection, then the event. So we can change these things also. Even the data sources over here. These are the data sources that we have. If any function is there, we don't have any function. We can create a Lambda function over here. If you go to the queries, these are the queries that I've already shown you. Then even we can have a caching over here. We can have a full request caching or per resolver caching. So we can enable this one. And you can see over here, cache settings are there. Then if you want to do the encryption in the transist or address, then you will create the cache over here. So these are the data things that we can. So whenever the API calls are being made, so all the requests from the same user will be cached or different different criteria are there. All API calls will return responses from the cache or per resolver caching is there from a specific operation, whether you want to cache the data or field definition in the resolver. So that will return responses to basically to your cache. So in the settings also over here, you can see over here, API name, default authorization mode, that is the key. So this is the key and there is certain expiry date also there. We can also generate a new one and even author additional authorization providers also we can have. You can select over here. You can see AWS uh, Cognitive User Pool is also there. IEM also there. OpenID Connect is also there and the AWS Lambda is also there that you can provide for authorization. Even you can also enable the login, firewall if you want to make it, X-ray, so these are the things that are provided in the settings. For monitoring purpose, we can have a CloudWatch logs also here. We can clearly see how many calls were being made to our API. So how many requests were there in the last one hour? Sometimes it takes some time to refresh over here. So you can see cache hits and all. So 
So all the details are coming in the bottom that will be showing to you, shown to you. And you can also have, you can have a custom domain name. Now this domain, you need to like basically add, add to the domain name. Then we need to get the certificate. You need to generate the certificate from the ACM and then you can create a domain name. So this is how uh, basically uh, AppSync works. So you can uh, define the schema, run a query against it, and you can just utilize this um, to get the started with the in your JavaScript, TypeScript, or Flow application. You just copy this one, npm install, AWS Amplify, CLI. Again, the C Amplified things are coming. So this is just a basic description about the AppSync when we'll be working with the AWS Amplify, it will give you a clear idea how these things are involved and how we can utilize it. So basically it's a uh, Amplify Studio is there in which we'll be having different components and AppSync is also one part of it. So this is, we can utilize. So you can see all the details are given over here, how we can install in the Android, iOS or the JavaScript. So this is how we can integrate our app. So there are some samples also there. If you want to have a look into it, how this works. So React, Angular, and iOS, lots of things are there. So there are some projects are there. You can just go to the GitHub and you can just have a look into it. Okay, so in the upcoming video, I'll be talking about Amplify how we can utilize this and how much beneficial it is and how much like it, it makes the development much faster and how this app sync, cognitive user pools, all the serverless architectures, how are being connected to each other. Even the DynamoDB will also be involved. Even the IAM will also be involved. Even uh, we can also have a step functions also involved over here. So lots of things are there in one place. So in the upcoming video, I'll be showing you how we can utilizes AWS Amplify. Then you can just, you know, connect the dots and you can have a clear idea like uh, how we can utilize this complete platform under which the rest of the things are being included at one place. So I hope you like my video. Please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.